Hey guys, really quick video on deterring, you know, would-be robbers or thieves from stealing your smartphone. What you can do to help, you know, prepare yourself for this and whatnot. So, uh, number one for advice, be aware of your surroundings. I know a lot of people tend to be caught up on the Facebook post or whatever, whatnot, but be aware of those that are around you. Also, don't worry about offending anybody. If there's someone suspicious looking around within 20 feet of you or even 50 feet of you, put your phone in your pocket. Just do that. Um, they're not going to be able to tell technically you're doing it because they look suspicious to you. Because I'm not saying you should look at them and then slip that phone in your pocket and giving them the eye, the evil eye that says, I know what you're about to do. No. But, you know, if someone makes you feel weirded out, you know, you can easily and smoothly play it off. Check the time on your phone or finish what you're doing. Give a like on your Facebook thing. Lock your screen. Put it in your pocket. Bam. The reason I say put it in your pocket is, you know, because if they're, if they're aiming to do a snatch and grab, um, if the phone's in your pocket, they're not going to want to rustle and tussle with you for like two minutes trying to get your smartphone out of your pocket so they can run off with it. You know, who really in their right mind is going to want to try to go and get their, you know, into your private? Because your pockets is your private space. You keep your money. You keep your keys. You keep your smartphone in there. So if someone tries to get their hands in there, obviously you're going to start fighting with them because, you know, you're going to feel weird. This is weird that their hands are there. That person's not going to want to deal with that. So, yeah, definitely put your phone in your pocket. Um, if the person has a dangerous weapon and they ask for your smartphone, give it up. Uh, how many people have died um, trying to keep their iPhone or their Android device and a person has a gun to them saying, give me the phone? No. No. They fight it off. Bam, bam, shot. They're on the ground bleeding to death and that got away with your phone anyways. So what's the point of taking a couple of slugs when you can just give up the phone? You got money, you can go buy another one, right? Um, yeah, I know not everyone's made of money too. So people be like, well, you know, that might be the only phone I can use for, for a while. I don't have the money to go and drop it out. But it's still not worth your life. Give them the phone. Install anti-theft applications on your device, any device that you buy, it will greatly help in assisting in catching the would-be thieves or the armed robbers. You know, I can't stress that enough because uh, people don't actually think about installing those types of applications until their phone has already been taken from them and then they start to think, oh, I could have installed Cerberus or I could have installed Lookout. But do it ahead. Plan ahead. It'll always be like 10 steps ahead of anyone. Um... But what else? Oh, passwords and pins. If you're going to use a pin, pick a hard pin that is, you know, not not something that someone's going to think up of in the first 10 minutes that they're trying to figure out your lock code. And if you're going to compare between a numeric pin and a password, I would definitely go with a password just for, you know, there are so many words that can be used as passwords in the dictionary. And I don't think anyone's going to take the time to sit with Webster's Dictionary and try to type out a password. Much less, Webster's Dictionary doesn't carry all the slang, so, you know, they would have to try and spell it correctly, and then they would have to try and figure a way how it could be spelt using incorrect letters <laughs> to create the same word. Um, yeah, it's just, no one's going to go through that hassle. So, passwords over PIN, but if you decide to use numeric PIN, pick one that's not so hard. Um... So let's see, yeah, we got those out of the way. Um, oh, and even though your battery may drain, keep the GPS on. Because with the anti-theft apps, they require the GPS for it to be on. Also, if your phone is taken, don't, you know, like if you're using servers, don't send your phone a bunch of messages like, I'm tracking you, you're going to get caught, buddy, the cops will be finding you soon. Like, don't. Because the less... That you the, the less that the crook or the would be thief is notified of them being traced or tracked, uh, the better the chances are for police to actually locate the phone. Uh, when you're over there, you know, sending um, messages or whatnot, believe me, the person who stole your phone, they're gonna shut your phone off for a couple of days, which which you know they're gonna expect everyone to die down. And then maybe about five five six days, maybe a week later, maybe if they're patient enough, three weeks later. Then they'll turn the phone back on and start playing around with it if it's unlocked or trying to figure out how. Now, this part of the video is for anyone that is 
thinking that they're going to go and rob people for their phones, let me just tell you right now, there's going to be a few hurdles that is just going to, it's not even worth doing it. Uh, number one, when it comes to the iPhone, there's an app called Find My iPhone, and if they have that on there and the person uses that, they can remote lock their phone, and the phone is locked. There's nothing you can do. You can't bring it to a homie and try to have them crack it, okay? That phone's got to go to an Apple store to get unlocked. And if you bring that phone to the Apple store and it's, you know, the IMEI's report is stolen, uh, you're, you're, you're busted. You're going to jail. Because they're going to notify the authorities. They're going to notify the owner that your phone is in their store while keeping you hooked on the line waiting. And uh, eventually you're going to see a couple of police officers walking in to grab you. So uh, iPhone's pretty secure. Now, people are going to be like, what about Android? Well, because there's so many different versions of Android, right now with 5.1 Lollipop, it has the best um, security option because if you have a pen, password, that person goes online that took your phone and they start looking up ways to get around your password and they, they learn about all the cool stuff that us nerds share with everyone else, and they're like, oh, okay, I'll access the recovery on the phone and just erase the phone. Well, with 5.1 Lollipop, if you factory reset the phone, you're going to be greeted with a page once you boot up the phone that's going to ask you for the Gmail account that was last logged in onto that phone, and you have to have the password. If you don't have those two, you can't get into the phone. The phone's pretty much worthless. And um, now for anything under, like like 5.0.2 Lollipop and under, um, yeah, that that's not going to help there. But, um, again... You know, you can do all all that you can. When you keep like a an anti theft app on your phone, you can track it before they ever have time to actually fiddle and erase things. So, I mean, that's that's one of the things you want to do. But don't harass the thief. You know, with messages, don't send messages to the phone saying you're being tracked. <laughs> Definitely don't do that because you're gonna give them the edge that they need to stay on top of it and to, you know, lessen your chances of recovering your smartphone. Uh, another thing. For all you thieves out there, is pulling the SIM card out of the device absolutely does nothing. Okay, yeah, sure, the SIM card's not in the device, and so you feel like there's no cell connectivity to the phone. Well, if it's for GSM, slightly. Slightly true there. But when it's for, like, phones that are, like, from Boost Mobile, Sprint, Verizon, that are CDMA, does nothing because the SIM card is only there for the LTE connectivity. You take that SIM card out, 3G will still connect to the phones. And that means that it's still connected to the network. Also, taking the SIM card out is, is stupid because you're going to connect the phone to your Wi-Fi or to your friend's Wi-Fi or to a public library's Wi-Fi. And anytime that phone is connected to the Wi-Fi, we can grab the, IP, the IPS address. We can give it to the authorities so they can start tracing its movements. So, yeah, it's just it's, it's pretty much pointless. Secondly, why are you robbing people for smartphones? Go get a job and get your own phone. I mean, that's just, to me, that's a coward. Okay, but, you know, so anyways, yeah, just wanted to throw this tip out there. Holiday season's coming up, Black Friday's right around the corner, Christmas sales is going to be all over the place, and, uh, you know, I would really hate for anyone to go through the experience that I went through getting a Christmas gift that was something that you really liked, and also, you know, precious to you, not in the fact of its value, but in the fact that a loved one gave that to you, so there's a little bit more emotional attachment to it. And then having it just ripped away from your hands, you know, it's a very crappy feeling. So uh, hopefully some of these tips that I gave you guys will kind of help you out or make you more aware. Uh, and if you guys enjoyed this video, leave me a thumbs up. Um, don't forget to click that subscribe button down there at the bottom. Leave a comment with some other things that you know about that are, you know, that will help with uh, anti-theft. Um, you know, getting the, uh, spreading the word and making everyone aware will help. And in that way, there'll be less smartphones stolen this season. So... That's it, guys. I'm going to cut this video out. Thanks for watching, and you guys have a great Thursday.